So there are a few more instructions left on this sheet that we haven't really talked about how they're implemented yet. Uh, two kinds that are a little bit confusing. One is multiply and divide, and the other is floating point numbers. We'll do a whole section on floating point numbers, uh, and then we'll work on how to do arrays. Uh, but I wanted to do a short video on multiply and divide just to talk about the way that MIPS implements this. There are a few different ways to implement multiply and divide. Uh, the real constraint with multiply and divide is that multiply and divide have the potential to generate a result that is twice as big uh, as the result that you started with. Let's look at an example. Maybe we'll do uh, 3 times uh, 7. Let's imagine that these are, well, let's do a, let's do a bigger number. Let's start with uh, 8 times 3. There we go. Now yeah, let's do 8 times 5. Why not? Okay, 8 times 5 is the number we're looking at. Why not? Who cares? Uh, 8 is 1, 0, 0, 0. 5 is 0, 1, 0, 1. Uh, these are two 4-bit numbers, and let's look at how big the result could be. Uh, the, how, how big the result is here. 1, so first we take 1 and we multiply by the multiplicand. Then we take 0 and multiply by the multiplicand. 1 and multiply by the multiplicand. And 0 and multiply by the multiplicand. And what we get is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Super easy to do. Uh, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 8 plus 32 gives us 40, and that's what we expect to have happen. Now, if you look at the result, <clears throat> you can imagine a situation. In fact, let's do, why not, because it's going to be painful to do, but let's do it. Let's figure out the biggest number that we could get when we multiply two 4-bit numbers together. It would be this times this, 15 times 15. Okay, let's figure out what that's going to be. One. Uh, so again, we do 1 times the multiplicand is 1s, and then again, and then again, and then again, and then we're going to add all of these up. Now, when the machine does this, we add them one pair at a time so they don't have bigger carries and a complication, but we'll just do this all at the same time. This is 1, this is 2, carry the 1, 1 and 1 is 0, carry the 1, 1, 2, 3, 4 is actually 0 and we carry the 1 up here. 1, 2, 3, 4 is 0 and we carry the 1 up here, right? Because 4 is 1, 0, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4 is 0 and carry a 1 up here. 1, 2, 3 is 1, carry the 1 here. 1, 2, 3 is 1, carry the 1 here. And that's our final result. Uh, and we should actually check and see if that's correct. <coughs> Uh, so I don't off the top of my head know what 15 times 15 is. It's 225. And so is this number 225? Well, this is 1 plus, uh, so this is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, plus 64, plus 128, right? Uh, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. Uh, and what is, is uh, 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 1 is, in fact, 225. So we got the right answer, which is great. Always good to double check. But if we notice, we started with two 4-bit numbers, and we got a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8-bit number. So that's a problem, right? Because we have, in our MIPS machine, 32-bit registers. And that means that if you take two 32-bit numbers and you multiply them together, then there's the potential to get a 64-bit result. We don't have 64-bit registers. We've got 32-bit registers. And so what MIPS does is it says if you take a 32-bit register, say register RS, and you multiply by register RT, instead of putting the result in register RD, uh, because register RD is potentially not big enough, we're going to put the result into two new special registers that we're going to build, high and low. And these two registers together are going to make a 32-bit result. Uh, you can combine them together, uh, and you can manipulate them as if they were a 64-bit uh, number, a 64-bit result, a 64-bit number. Now, honestly, most of the time you're not going to get a 64-bit result because most of the time you're not multiplying numbers together that are billions and billions big, right? You multiply two numbers that are even remotely big, uh, unless the result is bigger than 4 billion, you're not going to get a result that, that 
has value in the high register. And so most of the time, what you can do is just take that result from the low register, ignore the result from the high register, and deal with it. Also, you could take the result from the high register just to check and say, if that result is not zero, then we have an error because we can't deal with 64-bit numbers. It's just too big, right? But we still need to be able to put that result in in case we want to write some code to deal with it. So most of the time, we're just going to take the result in the low register and throw away the result in the high register. But what do we do with that? These are not registers that are in our register file, right? Where's our register file? Our register file doesn't have high and low in it. Right? It's got 0, A, T, V, A, T, S, T, and then all OS kernel reserved registers, and then a few stack pointers and stuff, but no registers called H high and L low. Um, but we do have a couple of extra instructions that we also haven't looked at yet, which is move from low, move from high. These are special registers, uh, and if you look at the way that the um, uh, the multiply and divide registers are set up, or the multiply and divide instructions are set up, what you can see is that for multiply instructions, high and low together get the result from RS times RT. We'll look at divide in a second. So high and low together get the result from RS and RT, and then what you can do is move from low uh, and then into some register RD, and that will put the result from the low half of the result of the multiplication into a regular 32-bit register that you can deal with. So those are the two instructions you have to use together. Multiply, I think it's M-U-L, uh, M-U-L-T, M-U-L-T, R-S-R-T. You take those two registers. This is a two operand instruction because there is an implied or inherent operand, which is the target uh, register, the destination register is actually high and low. So this is how multiplication works in MIPS. It's one of a few different choices that you can make. Um, other operating systems, uh, other assembly languages like ARM, what it'll do is it'll restrict the multiply instruction to only use even numbered registers and then the result will go into an even register and the subsequent odd register to make a double sized register uh, but this is a functionality that ARM uses that uh, MIPS does not use, and so instead we use these special inherent implied instructions or registers, high and low. Divide, on the other hand, uh, if you say RS divide by RT, the result goes into low, and its remainder goes into high. Okay, so the low register is the result of the division, and the high register is the remainder of the division. So if you want to do a modulo operation, a modulo operation, mod u low, right? For example, uh, 8 modulo 3 is, uh, this is the wrong thing, that's 8 divided by 3. 8 modulo 3 is 8 divided by 3 and the remainder. So what's the remainder of 8 divided by 3? It's 2. So the modulo operation gives you the remainder of a division. Um, and the divide operation gives you that division. And you can have access to both of these using the low and high operations, uh, low and high registers using the division uh, operation. And so we actually have some pseudo instructions that we can use uh, that will give us access to uh, a sort of a general purpose multiply and divide that are pretty good, right? Here's general purpose three operand multiply is you multiply RS and RT and then move from low RD. So this is a uh, MUL for multiply, and you probably saw this in your, uh, in your assembly code when you just multiply into RD, RS, RT, and you just think that it's going to do normal <laughs> how it's going to work, right? But it's not quite that because it's a pseudo instruction uh, that actually uses a two operand multiply, a two operand multiply, and then a move from low or a move from high. So that's how multiplication and division work in MIPS. Um, there is a so this is a pretty simple pseudo pseudocode uh, for a multiply. There's a much better pseudocode that is much more uh, sort of resistant to errors, and that's to do a multiplication. First, check if high is zero. If it's not zero, call an error. If it is zero, then we know that we can do a low. And so that's the basis of uh, the way that MIPS does multiplication and division instructions.